if you focus on results you will not change but if you focus on change you will get the results hello my dear students welcome to the channel this is your annapurna ma'am and today we will be learning about fruits so keep watching till the end now children fruits i know you all love to have fruits because they are yummy they are delicious they are juicy and they are great to taste each fruit has a different flavor and taste now fruits are one of the wonderful creations of god they come to us from our mother nature now fruits they are developed after the fertilization process is complete in the plants so the post fertilization events taking place in the plants are the fruit and the seed development the ovary of the gynoecium or the pistil or the carpel develops into the fruit and the ovules present within the ovary develops into the seed so now fruits can be also referred to as the ripened ovary or the matured ovary with or without seeds and the fruits can broadly be classified into three types they are a true fruit a false fruit and the parthenocarpic fruits depending upon which part of the flower develops into the fruit now what is a true fruit as we all know after the fertilization process the fruit development happens so in a true fruit the ovary of the carpel develops into the complete fruit in this case the fruit is said to be a true fruit example mango but in case of false fruit when the other floral parts are involved along with the ovary to develop into a fruit then it's said to be a false fruit example apple strawberry cashew nut now in the apple the edible part and also in strawberry case the edible part the fleshy part is derived from the thalamus it is the thalamus which develops into a fruit so that is why it's said to be as a false fruit thalamus is the structure which holds the flower in position now what are parthenocarpic fruits there are some fruits which develop even without the fertilization process taking place now parthenocarpic process can be a natural process or it can be artificially induced all the parthenocarpic fruits are without seeds because in this the fertilization process is not happening and the involvement of the ovule is not there so if the involvement of ovule is not there and no fertilization takes place then how can the seeds be produced so that is why the parthenocarpic fruits are always seedless example the seedless watermelon the seedless banana seedless oranges so parthenocarpic process is induced by using some plant growth hormones or plant growth regulators like the auxins which influence the formation of fruits without the fertilization taking place now the simple fruits can broadly be classified into two types they are the fleshy fruits and the dry fruits now the fleshy fruits are having a large quantity of moisture in them they are fleshy they are pulpy they are juicy and the dry fruits they have low moisture or no moisture content now the fleshy fruits are further subdivided into six groups they are the berry example is tomato the next division is drupe example mango and coconut 
the next division of the fleshy fruit is hesperidium examples are oranges lemons and many more the next division is the pepo which includes um, cucumber pumpkin and the next division is pom which includes the pear and the apple and the last division of the fleshy fruits are the ballosta which includes pomegranate so these fleshy fruits are divided based upon the type of ovary the fruits develop from and the arrangement of the seeds in them the next division is the dry fruits they can further be divided into dry dehiscent fruits next is the dry indehiscent fruits examples mustard seeds and the last is the sijocarpic fruits that is the example is the coriander seeds so these dry fruits are equally important as the fleshy fruits we prepare oil from them we use as spices in our kitchen so they also should be used in our day to day lives so now children let's understand the structure the typical structure of a fruit the fruit has two distinct parts that is the pericarp which develops from the ovary wall and the seed so again the pericarp has three parts in it that is the epicarp which is the outermost covering of the fruit is also the fruit peel next is the middle layer which is known as the mesocarp it's always mostly it's a juicy pulpy and fleshy but exceptional case is in coconut where the mesocarp is fibrous in nature whereas in mango it's pulpy in nature and the innermost layer is the endocarp which is the layer directly surrounding the seed so but it is hard in texture so this was the structure of the fruit i hope children you have understood about fruits and their classification with examples now in my last video of magical herbs and foods to avoid the corona virus a student had asked a few questions i've already given the reply in the comment section but i would like to explain it to everybody uh, what he asked was what are toxins and what are protozoans so i would like to explain it now toxins what are toxins the name the word toxin refers to anything that is poisonous in nature to the human body now these toxins they can be of plant origin or they can be of animal origin they can also be derived from microorganisms some of the microorganism derived toxins are like the tetanus toxin derived from the bacteria clostridium tetani and the diphtheria toxin which is derived from the bacteria bacteria that's corine bacterium diphtheriae so but these toxins are deadly and life threatening to human beings now the toxins of plant or the animal origin they are not harmful for the plants or animals but when they are taken by the humans in the form of food internally or externally in the beauty products these products they prove to be toxic to the humans so we should be watchful while using these products some of the animal toxins are like the combination of polypeptides chemicals and enzymes which cause a serious cell injury tissue damaging effects and the plant toxins like the glycosides tannins volatile oils and many more which causes life threatening damaging effects on human organ systems so anything that is poisonous is said to be toxin nowadays the air we breathe the food we eat the water we drink are all loaded with 
synthetic chemicals pesticides the heavy metals pollutants and many more these are also toxic to human body so children i hope you have understood toxins now what are protozoans as the name indicates as the name suggests proto that is meaning is first and zoans that is animals so the protozoans are regarded as the first formed animals examples like the amoeba the paramecium they have a single celled body now all the life processes takes place within this single cell all the life processes like the feeding the digestion the excretion the locomotion the reproduction and many more they all occur within this single cell body so they are single celled life forms now they can be free living or parasitic in nature they are animal like because they cannot make their own food so they have to depend on other food sources so they are heterotrophs and they are capable of moving from one place to another and some of the parasites they even cause human diseases because they are human parasites some are the examples like trypanosoma which causes sleeping sickness in humans and the plasmodium which lives in the liver cells it causes malaria so they are also deadly and life threatening the so the protozoans they are the single celled life forms they also they feed on other microorganisms other bacteria they on other food materials like the organic food matter or the tissues the debris so the i hope children you have understood what are protozoans and uh, what are toxins and you have understood about fruits so keep writing to me keep subscribing for more such videos bye take care and stay safe be safe feel safe and you must have all the seasonal fruits the fruits that are available at a particular season of the year because they are loaded with vitamins and minerals that are essential for our body to keep us healthy and protect us from many diseases